Hello friends. Today in this session, we will discuss rutting parameter for performance grading of binders. PG grading of binders is specified by two temperatures, highest temperature and the lowest temperature. For example, a grading of PG 64 minus 10 is suitable for a project location where the average 7 days maximum payment temperature is as high as 64 degree centigrade and the minimum payment temperature is as low as minus 10 degree centigrade. The higher temperature is to control the rutting in the payment and the lowest temperature is specified to control the fatigue. Today in this session, we shall discuss the rutting parameter for PG grading of asphalt binders and dynamic shear rheometer is used to determine this parameter. Two parameters are defined, complex modulus that is G star and phase angle delta. Complex modulus indicates stiffness in the binder, whereas phase angle indicates viscoelastic property of the binder. These two parameters are used to define a rating parameter G star by sine delta. And this parameter is evaluated in two stages for original binder and for short term aged binder or you can say rolling thin film oven residue. So we evaluate this parameter on original binder as well as on RTFO residue and these are the minimum values specified for original binder and RTFO. So the temperature which provides these values is the is the maximum temperature of the PG grading. Another parameter is fatigue parameter G star into psi delta which is evaluated after long term aging and this we will discuss in the next video. The super payo rutting parameter G star by sin delta is measured in an oscillation test which is conducted at 10 radian per second frequency and it explains the rutting susceptibility of asphalt binders based on the concept of dissipated energy. Sinusoidal stress is applied to a sample of binder which is sandwiched between two plates. One of them is fixed and another rotates or oscillates at a constant speed. One loading cycle takes place when the upper plate moves from A to B and then from B to A and then goes from A to C and then comes back to A. Now that completes one cycle or one oscillation. DSR records the maximum stress and strain in the sample and the area between this stress and strain is the dissipated energy. That is the amount of energy dissipated by the binder in one cycle and if F is the frequency and omega is the angular frequency then the dis dissipated energy or change in energy can be estimated using this equation. That is the integration of 2 pi upon omega into rho into d epsilon. Epsilon is the strain and is the stress and that is the angular frequency. So if you solve this equation, it will lead to that energy is equal to sigma rho epsilon rho sine delta into pi. Now stress upon strain is the complex modulus and if you substitute the value of epsilon 0 in this equation that is g star upon sigma 0 then this equation converts to that delta u is pi sigma square upon g star by sin delta and lower the dissipated energy lower will be the deformation in the binder and therefore g star by sin delta should be higher or you can say that high value of G star by sine delta is required for high rut resistance. Now significance of this test is that sine delta in rutting parameter refers to elastic behavior of the binder. For a truly elastic material, delta is zero. That basically indicates the time lag between the applied stress and resulting strain. And for truly plastic material, it will be 90 degrees. So binder with no elastic property has delta is equal to 90 degree that is sine delta will be 1 which is not desirable for the payment because we need, you need some flexibility. 
and stiffness increases with time and therefore g star value will also increase with time stiffness increases with time because of oxidation because of hardening of the binder and that will increase the g star value also the binder becomes rust resistant but it also become very prone to cracking this rolling thin film oven test is used to short term age the binder and this test is used to measure the combined effect of heat and air on a film of bituminous binder to carry out rtfo test heat the sample of bitumen until it is fluid to pour and then take 35 grams of asphalt binder into each bottle which is cylindrical and after that you place this bottle horizontally on a cloth and slowly rotate it so that a thin film is made on the surface of the bottle after that you place these bottles in the rack and cool it for 60 to 180 minutes and then carry out the test in the rtf machine the thin film of the binder is exposed to heat and air simultaneously complete test procedure is given in astm d2872 or astro t240 that is the effect of heat and air on a moving film of asphalt rolling thin film oven test in brief the test temperature is 163 degree centigrade the amount of sample required is 35 grams the chamber is preheated for 2 hours and total time for the test is 85 minutes and rotation rate of these bottles is 15 rotation per minute after the test is complete the sample is cooled for 60 to 160 minutes and then we take the weight of the bitumen and this loss in weight because of this heating should not be more than 1% the importance of this test is that it is used for conducting short term aging of the bitumen it simulates transportation laying and compaction of the material when the bitumen is heated and mixed with aggregate when it is transported to the site it is laid and compacted there is some kind of oxidation or some kind of hardening of the bitumen takes place this short term aging of the binder simulates this process of heating mixing transporting laying and compaction g star by sin delta is measured using dynamic shear rheometer now let me take you to the dsr laboratory just to explain how this g star by sin delta is evaluated first step is to switch on the compressor of the machine and then you switch on the dsr from here then the software is started in the laptop or in the pc whatever machine is attached to the dsr and icon for the dsr machine is generally available at the desktop the name of the icon will depend upon the type of machine being used and here you can initialize the software once it is initialized you can also
check the test to be conducted whether you are doing it on original binder or on RTFO or even after PAV or LAS, MSCR, whatever test you want to do, you can choose the appropriate test here and then place the sample between these two plates. Now the lower plate is a fixed plate here, upper plate goes up and it oscillates later. So you place the specimen here between two plates and then give the command here for trimming of the specimen. So specimen trimming is basically done to get the appropriate thickness of the film between these two plates. So upper plate comes down, it applies a pressure here so that you get the correct sample size and whatever extra bitumen is there, it will come out of the plate. Extra material is oozed out of the plate. This extra material can be removed using a special trimming tool which is generally supplied with the DSR machine and after you remove this extra material then your sample is ready for testing. Now through this software you can define the testing temperature. Now test temperature can be 64, you can choose 70, you can also choose 74, any temperature you can choose depending upon the grid of the binder. But it should not be more than 100 degree centigrade. Now let us say you choose a temperature of 64 degree centigrade and then start the experiment. So the DSR will bring the specimen at test temperature. Here you can see the temperature is 25 degree centigrade. So it will take time to reach to 64 degree centigrade. Once it reaches to 64 degree centigrade or your test temperature, you see here 64 is reached now. So experiment will start automatically. So you have a graph paper here and you have a table here. This table will give you the temperature, the load, the frequency, G star and here delta and last column gives you G star by sine delta and simultaneously you get all these points on the graph. Now this is the target value 1 kPa but actual G star by sine delta at a temperature of 64 degree centigrade are here by black dots. So there will be 20 readings and all these values are reported in this table. So you have four data points here, you have four values here, the next point comes, the next value comes here. So you will have 20 such data and at the end of the experiment in this table you will get average value of delta and average value of G star and average value of G star by sine delta. Now since these values are much higher than your target value, so automatically your software will increase the temperature to 70 degree centigrade from 64 to 70 and then this test is repeated. So this temperature will keep on changing until you get 
a value of g star by sin delta 1 or less than 1 kPa. So, at the end of the test, you get values of g star by sin delta at different temperatures. You make a plot here and find out the temperature at 1 kPa for unaged binder and similarly corresponding to 2.2 kPa for RTF4 SC2. And the lower of these two temperatures is the failure temperature. And that is considered as the highest temperature for PG grading. And as I, as I told you in the beginning that these temperatures are bumped or raised in a step of 6 degree centigrade. So accordingly, the highest temperature will be taken. So friends, thank you very much for watching this video. I hope it is clear. In the next video, we will discuss how to determine the lower temperature of PG grading.